Hello, friends. In this video, we'll look at another version of a budget Zigbee controller for managing LED lighting, primarily strips. The model shown has only one control channel, meaning it can adjust brightness besides just turning on and off. In this line, I'll leave the links in the description. There are other versions with two, three, four, and five channels, suitable for all types of strips including those with adjustable color temperature, colored, and combined except for addressable ones where special controllers are needed. Before we start, please like this video. It will help others interested in smart home topics find it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The device type is an LED controller. The device model is C01Z, where the number indicates the number of control channels. It has two outputs for power division, controlled in parallel. The interface is Zigbee 3.0. The maximum load current is up to 15A input, 7.5A for each output. The working voltage range is 5 to 24 volts. The power is up to 360 watts total, 180 watts for each output. The size is 74.5 by 35.6 by 16.5 millimeters. The device comes in a small cardboard box with a schematic image on the front part. On the side of the box, it's noted what model it is, with one channel for dimming or with two for adjusting color temperature, which is essentially dimming across two channels. Besides these, there are three more models for working with colored strips. On the back, brief technical specifications are listed, which I have already mentioned. By the way, for models designed for colored and combined strips, the limit per channel is up to 6A, maintaining 15A at the input. The package includes the controller itself, a small piece of double-sided tape for mounting, and a manual. The manual contains wiring diagrams for all models in the series. It shows that in some versions, including the one reviewed, the outputs are parallel. This is done to reduce the load on them. Additionally, the method for entering pairing mode is indicated, Press the set button four times or turn the power on and off the same number of times. The device is made in a compact rectangular case, typical for controllers of this type. Its length is just under seven and a half centimeters. The connectors are located on the narrow side edges. On the left side is the power input. You can connect either a standard DC jack of 5.5 millimeters or simply two wires, positive and negative. Here, a screw terminal is used. The same kind of terminal, but with four contacts, is on the other side, for connecting the strip. There are two positive and two negative contacts, connected in parallel, which allows for reduced load when using powerful strips. The backside has nothing interesting. The cover is removable, attached with clasps. Let's open it and see what's inside. It disassembles quite easily, you just need to pry the cover with something hard and thin. Be careful with the set button. Its outer part is just a small piece of plastic that is easy to lose. Apparently, the same control module is used in all controllers, as suggested by contacts labeled RGBCW corresponding to the five control channels. From the side view, it's visible how the control module is directly connected to the LED controller. The reverse side of the controller's board. Everything is made quite well, although I'm not sure about the cooling efficiency, especially at higher powers. A pair of field effect transistors are used here, with a maximum drain source voltage of up to 30 volts and a maximum continuous drain current of 50A. For testing such controllers, I have a test bench with a four-channel strip, three colored and one white. It is just what I need in this case. I connected the power using wires to the screw terminal, red for positive, blue for negative. The strip, or rather only one of its four channels controlling the white LEDs, to the V plus V output terminal. Upon first power on, the controller enters pairing mode, indicated by the breathing mode of the connected strip. I'll also add the controller's own power consumption. In this photo, power is supplied to it, it's active, but the connected strip is off. The power supply shows a current of 0.005 amperes. The consumed power is below the display limit, calculated at 0.06 watts. We'll start the logical part with testing the standard control system, Tuya Smart. As the controller operates via Zigbee, a gateway is needed for connection. I use a wired version with HomeKit support, link in the description. We activate the mode for adding new devices. We turn on the power to the controller and ensure that it is entered pairing mode. 
We wait until it is detected by the gateway. It appears as a light bulb, which sometimes happens, but it's not a problem as there's no difference in functionality. The plugin is standard. I've encountered such on controllers and LED lights before. The only feature is that it can be controlled by turning on and off and adjusting the brightness level. On the second tab for scenes, there are four preset modes. For this controller, they differ only in brightness level. For the two-channel one, also in color temperature. In the last tab, settings, there are several important functions and operating parameters. Let's start with the countdown option, a set period of time after which the controller changes its status. If it was on, it will turn off, and if it was off, it will turn on. In the timers menu, there are four more options, a timer, which allows you to set a schedule for turning on and off either once or depending on the days of the week. The sleep and wake up options set modes for gradual dimming and increasing brightness, respectively. By default, this lasts for 30 minutes, but it can be changed. For the wake up mode, there's an option to turn off the light after a set interval, once maximum brightness is reached. You can create many such settings, for example, at different times for different days of the week. The random on mode is useful for simulating the presence of people in the house, as it will turn on randomly within a set time interval, either once or on specific days of the week. The next three settings are for turning the light on and off. The do not disturb mode, if active, means that if power to the controller is lost and restored while the strip is off, it will not turn on automatically. But if it was on, it will turn on again. Default light determines the mode upon turning on, by default set to the mode that was active before turning off. And gradient, this is the smoothness of turning on and off in seconds, similar to the transition parameter in Home Assistant. In the main settings menu, compatibility with Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and SmartThing is noted. Here you can also grant general access to other accounts, check firmware, group with other controllers, and remove from the system. Do not disturb mode. If power was lost when the light was on, it will turn on again when power is restored. If the power resumes when the light was off, it will not turn on. Now, let's check the automation section. We'll start with the if section, triggers, which are events that lead to the execution of automations or conditions that can also be part of such smart home operating algorithms. For the controller, there are six options available. State, on, off mode, but in this type of controller, it's only one, white, brightness and percentages, more, less, or equal to the set value. Timer, more precisely a countdown, more, less, or equal to a time interval, the state of the do not disturb mode, which we just checked, and the limit by Zigbee connection level. Let's move to the then section, where we find the same six options, but now they are used not as triggers and conditions, but as actions performed by the device when executing the automation. Turn on, turn off. Again, there's no option to toggle the state. I don't understand why Tuya can't implement it. Setting the mode is useless for this controller, but useful for multi-channel versions and brightness, a normal, working option. Setting the countdown time, after which the light connected to the controller will change its status to the opposite, controlling the do not disturb mode and setting the limit by connection level. Let's check the claim compatibility with Google Home. To do this, remember, you need to add and enter the Tuya smart account credentials once in the menu of devices compatible with services. After that, all compatible devices will be added automatically. The controller has appeared in the device list. Standard actions are available, turn on, turn off, and set brightness, both from the application and compatible screens, as well as using a voice assistant. Although not stated by the manufacturer, but thanks to using a gateway with HomeKit support, we can also test this compatibility. I use the HomeKit controller integration in Home Assistant, which works similarly to Apple's Smart Home Control Center. Here, I have connected the Xiaomi Gateway 3 and the Tuya Gateway to which the controller is now connected. And it is in the list of devices, just like in the app, it is named as a light bulb. Besides controlling the light, there is an identification button, but pressing it leads to nothing. Usually, it's used to find a specific device amongst several similar ones and should trigger some action, like a LED flashing. Regarding the light, all controls are available, turning on, off, and adjusting brightness. Another important point, the HomeKit protocol works locally and does not depend on internet availability. 
Next, I'll test the Home Assistant integration, named Tuya, where devices are also automatically added after the account credentials are entered once. It's important to note that this integration is cloud-based and depends on internet access. Here is a list of my devices connected in Tuya Smart and supported by this integration. The reviewed device here has the correct name, Smart Zigbee Dimmer. This is what its page looks like. I should clarify that all the control methods I've shown so far, the native app, Google Home, HomeKit, and this integration, work simultaneously. That means you can turn on the light in HomeKit, adjust the brightness via Google, and turn it off with an automation in Tuya Smart. The control is similar to the previous systems, turn on, turn off, and adjust brightness. There are no additional options, but they can be configured in the app. Next, we move to alternative systems. To connect to these, the controller must be disconnected from its native gateway, or not connected to it initially. Consequently, everything shown earlier is not available for these systems. Let's start with ZCHE and the Sunoff ZB Dongle E USB Coordinator. After disconnecting from the gateway, the controller automatically entered pairing mode, which is convenient. It was detected by the integration and already at this point, it's visible that it has controllable objects. The situation here is similar to HomeKit, control of the light and an identification button that does nothing. Just to clarify, the control is local and does not depend on the internet. And when using a USB coordinator, it doesn't even depend on the router. However, in addition to the standard on-off control, there's control of color temperature and even color. But I think it's clear that only brightness adjustment is functional. And we'll conclude the compatibility checks with control systems using the Zigbee 2 MQT add-on, with version 1.34.0 being current as of the video date. Here, I am using the USB Zigbee Stick, Sunoff ZB Dongle P. The device connected fine with native support, so there's no need to install external converters. This is how the controller was identified in the system. This is normal for the Tuya ecosystem, where functionally identical devices can be released in different form factors. Recall even the light bulb form it took in Tuya Smart. The controller acts as a router, meaning it can receive and send data from other network nodes. Regarding control, it is the most comprehensive of all the ones we've looked at, except for the native application. Besides turning on and off and adjusting brightness, there's also the ability to control the Do Not Disturb mode. The test of this mode, which I showed in the Tuya Smart section, was repeated for Zigbee 2 MQT, it works correctly. Everything else, I mean what we looked at in the app, can easily be done using automations. There are even a few light effects here. The controller responds to some of them, including briefly entering a breathing mode on the light, which looks the same as in pairing mode. On the device page in Home Assistant, besides controlling the light, there is also control of the Do Not Disturb mode. If necessary, it can be toggled, for example, in automations. Zigbee 2 MQTT supports group operation, so I'm also testing it for lights. For this test, I'm using the Mo's logical dimmer, with a review link in the description. In command mode, it can directly control Zigbee lights that are in the same group with it. This control is maintained even when the coordinator or gateway is disconnected. I created a new group and added both the dimmer and the controller to it. I should clarify that full control of the controller is retained, it can be operated both from the interface and through automations. Checking the operation. Pressing the button on the dimmer toggles the light on and off, and turning the knob controls the brightness. Everything is fast and convenient, independent of the smart home server's operability and the availability of the coordinator and Zigbee 2 MQTT itself. A similar test, but here I used a power bank with support for fast charging mode and a special cable with USB-C and round DC connectors, which automatically switches the power bank to 12 volt output mode. To clarify again, 12 volts at the power bank output, not using a step up adapter built into the cable. This is better as the power bank's output is more powerful. Everything works fine and it can be used in emergency lighting mode. This is a decent and budget-friendly controller supporting various smart home management systems. It's compact with screw fixings on the terminal blocks. Regarding the stated power capability, I have doubts about its ability to operate reliably at currents around 15A for extended periods. For such cases, I would recommend looking at other options. However, for strips around 50 watts, which constitute the majority, it should be perfectly fine. That's all for now. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. I would appreciate your likes, as they help with promotion on YouTube.
If you don't want to miss new video reviews and tutorials, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. In the video description, you'll find links to stores where you can order this controller, to other reviews of similar devices, and also to my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home topics. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next videos. Peace to everyone.